Hey, I'm Michael, and today... Hi there, don't listen to that a-hole because he's boring and stupid and it sounds like he took an entire bottle of Benadryl before starting this. Listen to me instead, you can tell I'm more credible because I have a green screen and a lav mic. The information I'm about to give you is very boring. So to alleviate the urge that I know you have to click off this video, Get your hand off that mouse. I'll leave up some background video of me playing with my cat. I've been playing Minecraft Hardcore for about a year now, and that basically means that I fear my own death in a video game more than I do dying in real life. It's sad, I know. So to avoid this, I thought up a few ways to make my death in my hardcore world as least likely as possible. I've gotten enough beacons to the point where I can use them as lighting in caves, and I have enough farms running at such high efficiency that I keep having to fight off treasure goblins from stealing all my gold. If you touch my gold one more time, I'm gonna lop your little head off, you stupid green son of a bitch. Spawn is now incredibly flat, well lit, ugly, and really boring. I got a full set of netherite armor and tools in the first day of the update, and enough for all of my extra tools. I'm basically at the peak of safety in the current version, but what if you could get safer than safe? What if we went through the older versions of Minecraft and picked up some legacy items? Items that are so powerful that the devs decided they needed to be removed from the game itself. At the beginning of my hardcore world, I found an enchanted golden apple within the first hour of playing. If you don't know what that is, it's a very rare, very powerful food item that you can find only in dungeon chests. And when you eat it, it gives you all of these effects. And of course, eventually I had to eat it because I would have died without it. Of course, there's obviously a reason that these are so rare, and that's for balance purposes. Easy and infinite access to this item would make combat go on forever, and it would make it basically impossible to die unless you're the type of person to play Minecraft on a rotary phone. But what if, at some point, they were craftable? Yeah, up until the combat update, which ruined, among other things, ruined the ability to craft enchanted golden apples. Now, up until that point, they weren't nearly as powerful as they were today. Additionally, apples used to only be obtainable by killing the game's creator, Notch. <gasps> but between update 1.0.0 and 1.8.9, they were completely obtainable and renewable. With a decent gold farm, they weren't even that hard to get. So this is where we'll start. Now, you can start out anywhere from 1.8 to 1.8.9, but like an idiot, I picked 1.8.8 because I did not realize there was such a thing as 1.8.9. I took the usual steps. I started a new hardcore world. I got some wood, did a little mining off camera, you know, the usual. And then I uh, got up to the nether roof. You need to find a spot where the bedrock is only one thick, A, so you can teleport through it, and B, so you can break through it later. Fortunately, everyone's bedrock is exactly the same no matter what seed or what version you're playing in. So I'll put my coordinates right here so that you can find where I broke through the roof. All you need is a ladder and a few pearls to get onto the roof and you're all set. You'll notice that it took quite a bit of damage here, but as long as you don't spam the crap out of your pearls, you should be just fine. There is one key difference in versions 1.8 and 1.8.9 that matters for this run, and that is the method that you're gonna use to break bedrock. You see, in 1.8, there was a method of breaking bedrock that only needed four dark oak saplings. The only problem with this method is that it's not very consistent, you could run out of saplings, and it could leave you stranded on the nether roof. Sometime between 1.8 and 1.8.9, they patched this out. So, we'll have to use another method. I was kind of upset when I found this out because I thought it would be a lot more expensive to break bedrock than it was. However, as it turned out, it was a lot harder to find dark oak saplings than it was to find a bit of redstone and slime. Of course, if you don't like your life being unpredictable and disappointing as always, you could use this method, which utilizes piston timings and redstone. I'm not going to go into too much detail about how to break bedrock, but there will be links in the description. It's surprisingly actually really simple and not that expensive, except you're going to need two slime balls to make sticky pistons for breaking. Now you're going to want to pick your gold farm, and luckily, as I found, YouTube is a great repository for a bunch of old Minecraft tutorials. You know, back when they didn't know how spawning mechanics worked. I picked this design from Impulse SV just because it's simple and AFKable. Although, if you want better drops, you're better off using a farm that allows you to use a looting sword. I'll also link to a much more efficient design, although this one requires a lot more blocks and a lot more name tags. To be transparent, at this point, I died while AFKing in my gold farm. Take that as a warning that Impulse's farm is not entirely safe. I've also found that this farm is not the most efficient method of getting gold, but it's very inexpensive and easy to build. It did end up killing me, however, which means that unfortunately, this will not be my next hardcore world. It is fortunate for you though, because it means I can just cheat through the rest of this and show you how things are done. We are now in the end game of our 1.8 excursion, and now we can go AFK for a few weeks and, you know, go outside and do something productive. All right. Once you've got enough apples to satisfy your greedy lust for power in the name of fun and profit, our next stop can be anywhere from 1.9 to 1.11, and it is very imperative that you do not go past 1.11. 
First off though, I'd advise you take your world through all of the major updates so that your world doesn't end up getting bites out of stalled. So what was added in 1.9? Well, if you take a minute to get past the clunky combat that rivals the lengths of a league match, you'll find that the best enchantment in Minecraft was added this update, Mending. Mending is a godsend that allows you to repair all of your armor and tools with experience, meaning there's no reason for you to have to replace your diamond gear any point in the game. And since our gold farm supplies us with XP as well as gold, we're in the money. I would wait until our next update jump before you upgrade all of your weapons and armor, as there's a really easy way to get mending books after 1.14 using villagers. You're gonna need a new set of armor anyways, considering that there's another legacy item we can pick up in 1.14. The reason we're not going past 1.11 yet is because bows after 1.11 cannot be enchanted with mending and infinity at the same time. Having both of these enchantments mean that not only do you have infinite ammo, but you also have infinite durability on your bow. And yeah, I can, I can kind of see why they got rid of that. An easy way to get mending books in this update is an AFK fishing farm. You see, when you fish, there's a small chance that you can pull up an enchanted book, and an even smaller chance that that enchanted book will contain mending. And this is why I recommend going with 1.11 instead of 1.9. And that's because there's a marginally smaller chance of you getting an ink sack instead of the book you want. And unless you're some sort of sack collector, then that really isn't necessary. If you're the type of person to not pay attention to your item's durability or accidentally throw it into lava, rebind your drop key, you f moron. I'd recommend getting five or six of these before you go to a future version. This one is pretty much the easiest thing to get out of anything on this entire list, and it's mostly a convenience. But hey, you're not going to be able to go back to this version, so you might as well get it while you can. Before I make you. Our last stop of the day is 1.14.2, and you need to select this version of 1.14. It's very important, don't forget, uh, turn on the alarms and start the creepy FNAF ambience. <laughs> Seriously though, because if you're planning to go to the end and get an elytra before this update, you need to just forget it. Because there's a glitch prior to this update that can kill you if you go through an end gate, one of these things right here. You do, however, need to go into at least 1.14 to get the new legacy item. However, you don't want to go into 1.14.3 because that is when they removed God Armor. And yes, it's called that for a reason. I would argue that this is the most imperative part of your hardcore world surviving in terms of legacy items collected. God Apples are useful, but they're limited, they take time to eat, and they don't protect you against things like an Ender Dragon slamming into you a hundred times at once. God armor, however, is infinite, it's passive, and it protects against all types of damage. God armor is called as such because for a short period in 1.14, it was possible to get all four types of damage protection on one piece of armor. Protection four, blast protection four, projectile protection four, and fire protection four. It is insane with how good this armor is. And in 1.16, you can even upgrade them to netherite. God armor can now no longer be burned in lava. Before you go through to 1.14, I recommend getting your enchantments first. I do this in 1.13 because it's also easy to find shipwrecks that have mending inside. While it's pretty easy to get them in 1.14 with villager trades, native enchanting was severely nerfed to balance god armor. There are many good guides on how to properly enchant god armor, and the reason you need a guide for this is because if you get it wrong, there is a possibility that it becomes impossible to get all of the enchantments on your item. I'll link a good guide down below. Again, it may be advantageous for you to make an extra set if you're clumsy. From here on, you're pretty much set. Fight the dragon, get elytra, get totems, and you're safe for the rest of the game. You'll still need to play carefully, don't get me wrong, but you'll have an advantage many players wish they had starting out. This does take a good amount of time to set up. Overall, this took me about 50 hours, and if you're a casual player, I wouldn't recommend this for your hardcore world. Although, if you do want it to stick around, I would say this is absolutely necessary if you want to, I don't know, beat Thilza's record or something. I don't know, I, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, please let me know if you like this because this is pretty different from my usual content and I don't know if anyone likes what I make anyways. Maybe next time we'll make a guide on how to beat the dragon in hardcore. I don't know. I'm not busy. <laughs>